Gaia is a software that's designed to generate terrain. It works on a node-based procedural system that makes it very simple to generate endless variations of your terrain. Before we start, navigate to the top right of the UI and click the 2D button. This will display a 2D view of whichever node you have selected. This will be important when we create mats or textures later in the tutorial. Also, it's important to understand what the pin as underlay option does in Gaia. When you right click a terrain node, you will have the option to pin as underlay. This tells Gaia to display your texture maps on top of this node. If you don't select any nodes to underlay, your texture maps will show on a 2D plane. Let's start by adding a mountain node and badlands node to our graph. Drop a combine node down, add the mountain and badlands nodes to the combine inputs, change the combine method to screen. After combine, add a fold node. Increase the scale and rift values a bit. Bring down the midpoint value roughly 50%. Decrease the range to 15%. Drop down Stratify and Combine nodes. Pipe the Fold node into Stratify, then put the Fold node into Input 1 of the Combine node, followed by the Stratify node in Input 2. Click the Combine node and change the method to Max. Add a Fractal Terraces node after the Combine, then drop down Snowfall and Height nodes. Connect the Fractal Terrace to both nodes. Select the Height node and adjust the Min and Max values to highlight the base of the terrain. Then add a warp node, plug the fractal terraces node into the input, take the height node and connect it to the mask input. Now we can see this lower area of the terrain is being distorted. Select the snowfall node, change duration to 16%, intensity to 10%, settle thaw to 17% and snow line to 12%. The goal is to select for the very top of our terrain. You may need to adjust these parameters slightly. Drop a displace node after the warp node. Select the snowfall node and output the snow mat into the mask input of the displace node. Now we've displaced the top of our mountain range. Add a combine node, connect the fractal terraces node to input one. Connect the displace node to input two. Change the combine method to add. After the combine, create an erosion node. Adjust the duration to 8%, Increase random sedimentation to 65%. Under selective processing, change the area effect to precipitation amount and bias type to altitude. Increase the bias to 90%. Add a fractal terraces node after the erosion. We lost some of the terracing detail after our erosion and I want to add some of that back in. Select our previous fractal terraces node and connect the layers output to the new fractal terraces mask input. This will reinforce the terracing we had before our erosion. Create a copy of the erosion node and add it after the fractal terraces. Adjust the rock softness to 5%. Connect the erosion node to an absolute node. The absolute node takes your terrain object and turns the height values into absolute values depending on the threshold parameter. Adjust the threshold to a value that selects for the upper half of the terrain. The lower the threshold value, the more of the terrain it will select. At the bottom of the properties panel, click blur and increase it to five. Now we've created a mask for our terrain based on height. Add a rocky node next to the absolute node. Change the style to B, size to 59%, small rocks to 80% and breakage to 80%. We're going to use this node to add some detail to the upper half of our terrain. Add a combine node and connect the last erosion node to input 1. The rocky node connects to input 2 and the absolute node gets piped into the combine mask. Change the combine method to screen and increase the ratio to 100%. You should be seeing some nice rocky details in the upper half of your terrain. Add a height node after the combine node. Select the height node, adjust the min and max values to select for the peaks of the terrain. Increase the fall off to smooth the mask. Create a thermal erosion node and connect the combine node to it. Pipe the height node into the area mask input of the thermal node. Now we've eroded away a little bit of our rocky details. The goal is to get as natural of a look as possible. I think we're eroding away a little too much of the detail from the terrain so let's go back to the height map and tighten that map up a little bit more constraining it mainly to the peaks. Create a final erosion node after the thermal node. 
Add a height node and change the min and max values to select for the base of the terrain. The terrain still has a bunch of weird details left over from earlier in our build and I think we need to erode them a bit more before we get to texturing. Connect the height node to the mask input of the erosion node. Now the base of the terrain has been smoothed out a bit and we are ready to start texturing our terrain. Select the final erosion node, right click and pin as underlay. For this terrain we want to focus on creating two main looks, a rock texture for the mountains and a grass texture for the valleys. Here's what my final textured terrain looked like. In order to do that we'll use sap maps to create these individual looks and then create a mat to separate them. Create a texture node and connect the erosion output to it. Connect the texture node to a sap map. For this node I chose a dark purple gradient. Connect the texture node to a new sap map. Change the sap map to a more neutral gray gradient. Add a combine node after the two sap maps. Connect them to inputs 1 and 2. Adjust the blend value until you get a look that you like. Drop down a flow node and connect it to the erosion. Plug the flow node into another sap map. Change the gradient to something where the highlights are a white or gray color. You can use the reverse option to flip the gradient around and get the desired results. Create another combined node, connect the second sap map and the flow sap map to the new combined node. Now let's work on creating the grass texture. Take the first texture node we created and use it to produce two new sap maps. Change the library for both to be green and pick a different gradient for each. Combine the two sap maps with a new combined node. Rename the rock combined node rock diffuse and the grass combined node grass diffuse. Alright, this is our final texture build. We need to create a mat for the grass texture, so let's add snowfall and height nodes after the erosion. Select the snowfall node and change the duration to 5%. Change the settle thaw to 100%. Select the height node, adjust the min and max values to highlight the mountainous portions of the terrain. Add a combine node, name it diffuse grass mat and connect the snowfall snow output into input 1 and connect the height node into input 2. Change the method to multiply and increase the ratio to 100%. Add one final combine node, connect the diffuse rock node to input 1 and the diffuse grass node to input 2. The grass mat node connects to the mask input. Increase the blend ratio to 100%. Now we've got a final diffuse texture for our terrain. All right, it's time to get our terrain ready for export. First, let's add measure and detail nodes after the final erosion. Select the detail node and click the equalizer button at the bottom of the properties panel. The detail node will generate a texture map with details that we can use as a bump map later in cinema. Now we need to select the nodes in our graph that we want to mark for export. To mark a node for export, right click it and select mark for export or use the keyboard shortcut F3. In our graph, mark the following nodes for export. Mesher, diffuse main, diffuse rock, diffuse grass, diffuse grass mat, flow map, and the details map. Select the Build tab to the right of the Properties tab. It will list all of the nodes you've selected for output. For this tutorial, I'm going to keep the resolution to 2048, but you can also increase that parameter to raise the resolution of your mesh. It will just take a little longer to build. Under Options, change the range parameter to Raw. This will make sure that the height of the terrain is accurate once we import it into Cinema. Change the build destination to a location where you want your terrain files to save to. Finally, hit start build and save your terrain files. Now you can import these terrain files into your 3D application of choice. I'll provide a download link to the final terrain files in the description of the video. So even if you didn't watch the whole video, you get a free uh, terrain object along with uh, the texture maps. So enjoy. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial.